So, the V12 engine. Don't think it's been done before in a children's car. Uh, 300cc V12, uh, water cooled, single overhead cam, two valves per cylinder. Um, it's a bit of a special car. I suppose I'm always trying to push my limits and my boundaries as to what I've made before. And a real V12 will really do it justice. Should sound amazing. Um, 10 horsepower should make quite a big difference to the car's speed. So that was why I started looking around. So the first engine I saw was one by Martin Orndorff. That was for sale on eBay. I'll put a picture up now. Uh, he makes lots of uh, V12 engine kit parts and plans and a lot of other model engines but they're air cooled so I was thinking about how I can make it water cooled and then I thought actually you know it's quite a lot of work maybe I should just make my own so that's when I started looking at the Honda GX25 for parts. So these are some early sketches that I did. You can see that I was thinking about making the crank um, with a pinch bolt. Um, not really sure how that was going to work, but they used that sort of uh, setup on several model engines, but I couldn't really get it to hold the torque that the engine was going to produce. So uh, after a few sketches, and I started going over to the engine. So even though the GX25 looks small and the valves are tiny and the cylinder is really small, all of the bulk makes it difficult for that repeatability that you need to make a compact engine. So that's a barrel that's had the bottom taken off you can see it's an overhead cam that uses this rocker finger arrangement. So as you as you turn the cam, it makes the valves open, which seems to work quite well. So I wanted to carry that over, uh, but I was running out of space really. The width of this, this would make an engine about 600 mil long, which is just not really practical. So uh, first stage was to cut it down a bit. So uh, what I've done here is I've shortened the whole top of the engine. I realise the rockers aren't over the top of the valves, but I just need to shorten the shafts a bit more. Um, one of the problems I had with the original setup was if I wanted to run a camshaft, the camshaft was running right between the two valve springs and top caps. And there wasn't enough room. I wanted to run a six mil shaft. So changing the rocker angles, these actually come in pieces so you can press them together at different angles. So raising it up slightly and removing the pulley section of the cam that got enough height to run the camshaft through here and the camshaft runs between the rockers. It's close, but I'm looking to get this dimension as compact as possible, uh, even to the point where I've got a smaller spark plug coming so it doesn't overhang too much between the next cylinder. So this setup now, that gets me um, about a 380 mil um, engine. Um, it's quite a lot of work to modify these but of course you get valve guides, you get valves, you get a Nicosil liner, hardened inserts, um, so it'll run on a lead, unleaded fuel and it's obviously a four-stroke engine as opposed to a lot of the small two-stroke engines. Um, so yeah it just gets me nearer to where I want to be with the engine being water cooled, you know, electric start. I want it to run with oil in the sump, be sort of self-contained and uh, and sort of clean to run, really. 
um, buying engines that are already made, especially four strokes means you get nice pistons and rings and it's all repeatability with a, a multi-cylinder engine. Um, I'll be reusing the sections of crank. These I've just machined so that they push together. So this has got an eight mil spigot. That's gonna be force fitted or interference fitted in that section. And then I'm just using longer pins off the shelf, hardened steel pins. Um, because I'll be running two con rods on each journal. So the first stage is to get all the crank built up. Uh, and then, because I've started ordering laser cut parts to make the block and then realized that the bore centers are not really achievable. So I'm gonna build the crank up first with the rods and pistons and everything on, and then work out the exact dimensions of the block from that point. Um, this also, when it's pressed together, will have a 12 mil wide bearing pressed over the center, so it will have even more support. I've tried lots of different crank setups and force fitting, interference fitting pieces together and then checking the torque. So I'm expecting the torque for the engine to be around 15 foot pounds. And so I'm looking at the crank needs to be 25 foot pounds before it starts to move. So I've got a good area of safety. Uh, that is part one of the V12 engine build. Thanks for watching.